focus on me, don't you? Welcome everybody to GCU Arena for tonight's matchup between the GCU Lopes and the UTRGV Vaqueros. Before we get started, we're going to take you down to center court for today's play introductions.
She has gone on to become the first low to record 1,000 kills against Division One competition and is fifth all time for GCU. Natalie came back from missing half of her junior season to set records and finish off an outstanding career. Natalie will graduate with a degree in accounting and is finishing her master's degree. Natalie is accompanied by her dad, Tom, mom, Mel, and husband, Matt, along with her grandparents. Ladies and gentlemen, number 15, Natalie Tardy. Once again, let's give a round of applause. Catrice Pond, Mariah Cobb, Jordan Sanchez, Hannah Hicks, Randy Powers, and Natalie Tardy. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this afternoon's competition with the word of prayer. Today's prayer is led by Karsten Kemp, a GCU Habits leader and a senior majoring in all things GCU. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for these athletes that are here. I also want to say a special thank you for the seniors and their commitment to GCU, and especially the volleyball program. Lord, I pray for safety as well as enjoyment for all of our athletes. God, we praise you, we love you, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Go Lopes! Thank you, Carson. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the playing of our national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this afternoon by our very own Thundering Herd Pep Band under the direction of Paul Cook and today his associate, Kevin Pop. Thank you. And now let's meet the starting lineups for this afternoon's contest. First of all, for the UT RGB Vaqueros. An outside hitter, junior from Mir, Norway, number one, Ragni Steen Knudsen. At middle blocker, a sophomore from Campinas, Brazil, number two, Barbara Silva. At middle blocker, a junior from Helodius, Texas, number three, Alexandra Ecker. The center is a junior from Subotica, Serbia, number 10, Dubrovka Koya. The middle blocker is a freshman from Prague, Czech Republic, number 14, Veronica Yandova. The libero is a junior from San Antonio, Texas, number 18, Giselle Zayas. And a right side, a senior from Navi Sad, Serbia, number 23, Bojana Mitrovic. The Vaqueros are 15 and 11 on the season, 9 and 4, and in second place in the Western Athletic Conference. They're under the direction of head coach Todd Lowry, assistant coaches Vinny Vigon and Erica Andachi.
Welcome everybody to GCU Arena. I am Phil Katoffman alongside Dewey Jeffries. It is senior night and it's also Veterans Day. We also want to give a special thanks to all the men and women who are currently or have served in the United States Army. And it is going to be a very fun game for everybody today. Dewey, the Lopes look to rebound after a very depressing loss last Wednesday against New Mexico State. Try to rebound against UTRGV. Tell us a little bit about the New Mexico State game. You know, the Lopes did really well. They fought hard. A lot of the sets were pretty close. They went up five sets, lost three to two against the New Mexico State Aggies, but that did not go without any successes that entire time. Natalie Tardy reached her 1,000th kill. You know, in the second set, her second kill of the second set, to be specific, she did reach that goal. And that actually leads us into today's game where we have senior night, where we have some of the star players, the seniors, Hannah Hicks, Mariah Colley, Randall Powers, we have some of the strong players that we need, and we think that today they're going to show up against UTRGV. And UTRG with the first serve. Wilps looking to return. Tardy blocked away. First point to UTRGV. So Catrice Prawn trying to get the return, but she's blocked by that front court of UTRGV. UTRGV is 15 and 11, or 9 and 4 for the conference. While the Lopes are three and ten for the conference, eight and seventeen all. Bakoya sets it up. It's going to drop for another point. Two to nothing. UTRGV. The Lopes fought hard against New Mexico State this past Thursday. They are the number one seeded team, and right here the UTRGV Vaqueros are the number two team. And we saw a good effort by the Lopes, and we think that we'll see that same effort again today. Trying to drop it over the top was Powers returned by UTRGV. Off the hands, great save. Pond with the kill, and she'll get it. And the Lopes are on the board, two to one. A great diving save by Jordan Sanchez. And then Catrice Pond is there to give the Lopes their first point. Sanchez with the serve. Bakoya with the set, it'll drop. The Lopes are definitely going to need to quicken up their defense a little bit. The Vaqueros are quick on those kills. They see that opening spot and they go right for it. Knutson now with the serve. 3-1 lead. Return by Pond, over the top. Saved by GCU. Pond for the kill, blocked again. That tough front line for UTRGV gets the best of GCU once again. Four to one they lead. Knutson. Ready for the serve. Pond. 
Looks to bump. Back to Pond. Pond for the kill. On the recover, UTRGV. Dives, no good. Good job. Good dive by Cauley, but just not enough for GCU. 5-1 UTRGV leads. The Vaqueros are already working their way, attacking pretty aggressively. They usually average about 12.6 kills a game. A Kept set. Looking for the kill. They'll find it. On the far left, Mitrovic with the kill. Timeout for GCU, so we'll take our first timeout. We'll be right back right after this. Remembrance and reflection, community and celebration, humbled with honor. Our veterans are the silent heroes whose courage and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. This is a time for reuniting with those who served beside you, for the faces you missed while away. This is a day to stand tall, united with pride. This Veterans Day and every day, Grand Canyon University honors our heroes and pays tribute to your heroism. Thank you for your service. UTRGV out to a very early lead in the first set, six to one. And GCU is gonna have to find a way to respond or they're gonna find themselves down early. Absolutely. The Lopes, knowing what they need to do, they know they gotta fill those gaps. They know they gotta get in those those holes that the Vaqueros are able to see so easily. But if we, if the Lopes get the chance to outmaneuver and just see where they're gonna attack at and cover those holes and cover the tracks basically, then the Lopes will have at least a better defensive lineup against the Vaqueros today. So Knudsen will get the serve again. In the air, Lopes trying to keep it up. Far left. Off the hands, Vakoya. Front line, no good. Off the hands of Hannah Hicks, so it'll fall for another point for UTRGV. Seven won the serve. Seven won the score. Serve coming from Knudsen. Pond, looking to set it up. Blocked again by the front line. It'll go out of bounds, so you, GCU with another point. Two to seven now the score. Lopes are definitely going to have to look out for those attacks. They're the Vaqueros' strongest killers right now. Barbara Silva, Ragnistin Knudsen, and Brianna Mitrovic, they're the top attackers right now for the Vaqueros. And if the Lopes get the chance right there. Yeah. The Just Vaqueros. like you talked about, Dewey, that front line for UTRGV. Alexandra Ecker with that kill right there. So UTRGV with another chance. This will be Zayas. Hope's trying to keep it alive. No good. It'll go out of bounds again off the hands of Catrice Pond. In the last matchup the Lopes had against the Vaqueros earlier this season, the top blockers were Maria Adams with eight blocks, Claire Kavensky with four, and Natalie Tardy with three. So if Coach Nolan can utilize some of these players and get them back in this game and get some of the quick, responsive blockers into this. Tardy looking for the kill. It'll go out of bounds, so it'll be another point for UTRGV. Tardy was looking for the point to be for the Lopes, but the refs called it against them. So Zayas with another serve, 10-2 to two to score. Kali over to Pond, looking for the kills, Kali. Off the hands again of Hicks, it'll go out of bounds, 11-2. to In the air. The spike, no good. Again, the front line for UTRGV is so strong. Twelve to two the score. And we'll get a substitution coming in. Now is number eight. That is Claire Kavinsky. She'll check in for Pond. Zayas with the serve. 
Keeping the ball up. Blocked again, and this time it'll go the way of the Lopes. What we're going to need to see from the Lopes, we know that they're going up against the number two seed, but the Lopes are definitely going to have to show some focus and some, some determination so that they can have a similar effective game. Oh, beautiful touch over the top, a return by the Lopes. Wakoya on the bump. Drops it over, no good. Lopes keeping it alive. Pond with a kill, it'll hit off the hands and go out of bounds. Another point for GCU. It's a good volley right there. The Lopes had excellent communication, reading each other, feeding off of each other's energy, being able to anticipate what was going to happen next. Kavinsky with the serve. Return by UTRGV. Off the hands of the front line for Lopes, they'll keep it up. Bike attempt no good, kept up by UTRGV. Just through the hands of the front line, it'll fall for another point. 13 to 14, Lopes finding themselves in an early hole. 13 to four. <laughs> So Tegan DeFalco will come in. Looking to give GCU some sort of spark early on, 13 to four, they're down. Tegan DeFalco has been a strong GCU player the entire year with kills blocks. Tegan tries to get that one over the line, it'll be returned. Off the front hands, hit again. And it'll fall for a point. Great job by GCU, Natalie Tardy. With a point for the Lopes. She keeps adding on to her kills right there. Well into the thousands now. So Hicks will serve. In the air, returned by UTRGV. Bakoya sets it up. Off the, off the bar, it'll be a point for GCU. So Hicks trying to get something going for GCU. 13-6 the score. Lopes working their way to come back. Hicks. Bakoya sets it up. It will go the way of UTRGV. Just finds the back end of the court. So now UTRGV will serve. Mitrovic will serve it. Returned by the Lopes. Far left. It'll drop again. Overliable Natalie Tardy with another point. We are at 14 to 7 right now. The Lopes working their way back. Carpenter serves that one. GCU looking to score. Bakoya sets it up, dropped over the top, no good. Sanchez over to DeFalco, still keeping it alive. The rally going. Sanchez keeps it alive for GCU. Over to DeFalco, blocked again, and it again just tips the back of the court. Great rally by both teams, but it'll be a point for UTRGV. It was very close. The Lopes actually kept that one in the air for a good amount of time, trying to fight it. And now Veronica. Jandov with the serve. Sanchez on the return. Carpenter over to DeFalco. Jandov on the return. Bakoya on the drop. No good block by the Lopes front line. Over to DeFalco. DeFalco sends it a little too far. It'll go out of bounds. Another point for UTRGV. So another timeout, this time by the Lopes. We'll take a timeout ourselves. We'll be right back right after this. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. 
GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages fewer than 17 students with full-time faculty. Integrate your education with your faith and Christian worldview. Welcome to the family. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University online. I'm Melody Horton. I'm an out. Welcome back, everybody. Currently, the Lopes finding themselves in a little bit of a hold down, 16 to 7 in the first set, but they're looking to rebound by some great play by Tegan DeFalco. Absolutely. We're going to go back to the court right now. Tegan DeFalco again, looking to really affect as the point's going to go to UTRGV right there. So it'll be another point for UTRGV, 17 to 7 now the score. UTRGV will serve. Jandov with the serve again. Sanchez keeps it alive. Over to Carpenter. Okoya. Sanchez in the corner, a little too far on that one by Randall Powers as it'll go out of bounds. 18 to 7 now the score. Proving to be a tough set for the Lopes right here. But we're hoping they get into a groove pretty soon. Service error right there. Service error will definitely help. Service error by UTRGV. Lopes now down 10. They got to find something now. They got to they gotta get into a groove. The Lopes have a history of starting off a little slow. But once they get into the groove, they definitely start racking up points. It's Tegan DeFalco. Oh, nice shot bat. over the top for GCU. Randall Powers with the touch. Beautiful little touch over the net right there. Snuck it in. They were not expecting that. DeFalco now will serve again. In the air. Okoya with the set. Off the hands, this the front line for GCU. Another point. Just like we were saying, they're getting into a groove right now. And the Vaqueros, a couple of errors back to back to back. It's definitely not good for them. You talked about getting on a roll, Dewey, and it looks like we're finding it. DeFalco with a serve. Vakoya with the set. Spike blocked again by the front line. UTRGV keeps it going. It'll find another point for UTRGV, but good play so far by the front lines of Randall Powers and Maria Adams. Those, those really close in the corner shots. Times like these where refs really come in handy. We don't have the eyes to see exactly where the ball landed. Garbinder sets it up. Kavinsky, returned by UTRGV. Vokoya sets it up. Front line again for GCU Strong. Blocked again, and it'll go the way of UTRGV. It might have run off the hands of one of the Lopes up front, but the hole is getting a little bit bigger. 20 to 10 now in the first set. The Lopes are definitely starting to show up a little bit more, though. Their front line is starting to be more aggressive. And that's exactly what we need from the Lopes right now. Uh, a little bit too far in front of her is Kavinsky. It'll go another point for UTRGV. And Vakoya will keep serving. 21 to 10 now the score. Vakoya, Kavinsky on the bump to Carpenter. Over the top, off the hands, it'll be another point. Great hit by Maria Adams. Point for GCU, 21-11. We want to see the Lopes hopefully make a comeback this set. But if nothing else, this set will definitely be like a warm-up for the Lopes. So that th when we go into the second and third sets, we'll definitely be able to see some more of that. Off the hands again of Hannah Hicks in the front lines. 22 to 11, but you're right, Dewey. Maybe this can start to get the ball rolling. GCU maybe just getting a little bit of the rust off. Kind of an earlier game they played in, at night against New Mexico State. So we'll see if this is maybe a, a lead up to the second set. Serve for UTRGV. Set up by Carpenter. Spiked. It'll be a point for UTRGV just a little bit too out in front. A great look by the Lopes. That was Kavinsky. So Knudsen will serve 23 to 11 in the first set. The DeFalco, Carpenter on the bump. 
Hicks, no good. Vakoya on the set. DeFalco keeping it alive over to Carpenter. Carpenter to Powers. Ball returned. Front line's off the hands of DeFalco, and it looks like it was hit too many times. Might have rolled off of DeFalco's arms and unfortunately into her face. So 24 to 11. UTRGV one point away from taking the first set. The Lopes with eight attack errors right now in this first set. Definitely a huge, huge factor into the deficit the Lopes are facing right now. Spiked into the... Now just like that, UTRGV finds the first set and the Lopes start off a little rusty, Dewey, but at the end of that first set, they looked pretty good. They did. They, they were starting to warm up. They were starting to be able to feel more comfortable playing against the Vaqueros right now. But we'll see what they go in the second set. Well, second set is coming up. And, but first, let's get to know our GCU volleyball players just a little bit better with, with this. I'm Melody Horton. I'm an outside hitter, and I'm from Houston, Texas. I was always number 11 growing up and in high school. My brother and my sister were both number 11 too, so it's kind of just like a family number. My nickname, you just go by Mel, you know. Uh, it's short for Melody, so that's, that's how that's happened. Most embarrassing song on my phone is probably like the whole Hannah Montana soundtrack. Favorite song right now? Um, I don't know if I have a favorite, but I like basically anything by Drake. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Getting to know Melody Orton a little bit. It's always a lot of fun to get to uh, know these players just a little bit better. Absolutely. You know, we see them play volleyball all the time, but you know, they are still GCU students. They still have lives outside of volleyball, and it's always good to be reminded of that and see what they do outside of this all the time. Now, speaking of volleyball, Dewey, second set coming up. What do they have to do to tie this one up and let this game keep going? Honestly, like I said in the beginning, they were leaving those pockets wide open for the Vaqueros to just kill into those spots. And the Lopes did show up a little bit towards the second, the end of the first set where their front line was being more aggressive, and they were blocking a lot of those kills and those attacks by the Vaqueros, but if we sharpen up that defense, tighten up that defense a little bit, and we get some of the offensive errors off of the marker, then we'll definitely be able to do much better this set for sure. Well, like you said, the defense for GCU just needs to tighten up a little bit, but it seems like they're getting some really great play from the front line of Hannah Hicks and uh, Maria Adams. Some great blocks, some great kills for GCU, but just not enough in the first set. So the second set is coming up, about 30 seconds away. And Dewey, hopefully we can get some more sparks from Tegan DeFalco. She played phenomenal in the first set. Absolutely. She came in about halfway through, but she did spark up some of that energy that the Lopes did not have at the very beginning of the set, getting us the chance to kind of revamp our, our, our game and revamp what we were doing. They were able to see everything that's going on, and with Tegan DeFalco in there, they just have a little bit more of a centered focus uh, with her and their, as their support. Play through DeFalco, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully the front line will stay strong for GCU in this second set. We're just about two or three seconds away from taking you directly down to the court, which we will. Second set getting underway. GCU trying to tie it up, send this to hopefully four games. So GCU trying to get something going. Get it, get on the board early on. Like we said, play against through, play through DeFalco, the front line staying strong for GCU defensively. And if they can patch up a little bit of the holes, I think this team will find an easy win in the second set. Absolutely. Jordan Sanchez switched out Emma Ahern in now as the libero. We're gonna see how this lineup at the beginning of the second set will do. Tegan DeFalco will serve. Tegan DeFalco with the serve. Returned by UTRGV. McCoy on the set. Off the hands of Ahern. DeFalco's there. Kaminsky with the drop. 
Off the hands, it'll be a point for GCU. They get on the board early. That's exactly what we were talking about right there. That early start that the Lopes have, they're going to need that to go into the, this entire set. They're going to need that energy. They're going to need that focus to go into this next set. So another substitution this time. Marie Adams will come out, and Natalie Tardy will come in. Served by DeFalco. McCoy on the set. Oh, spiked down hard by Knudsen for a point. Tie game now, one to one. Great set by Vakoya, and then an even better kill by Knudsen. That one had some force behind it. Absolutely. So Vakoya will serve. Ahern on the return. Over to Kaminsky. Miscommunication by UTRGV, still sent over. Ahern on the bump to Carpenter. Carpenter to Tardy off the hands. It'll be a point for GCU. Already a massive improvement for the Lopes. They are now in the lead for this set. They did not lead at all the first set. Well, Dewey, like you said, maybe the end of that second set, the end of that first set was a little bit of a, uh, a preview of what we were to get in this one. Jordan Sanchez to serve. Sanchez will serve. McCoy will set it up. Great dig by DeFalco. Carpenter off the Kaminsky, off the shoulder. Kept alive, DeFalco will send it back over. Ooh, nice little drop over the top by Ecker, right into the legs of Heidi Carpenter. So it'll be another point for UTRGV, and the back and forth continues for both these teams, two to two in the second set. If the set keeps going in this direction, this could be good for the Lopes as they continue to get hot and get warmer for this set. They started off a little slow first set. Now they're coming in, balancing out the, the game. DeFalco keeping it alive. On the kill is Tardy. It'll drop through. Another point for GCU. Three to two now the score. Lopes picking up. You can see some of the, en the energy on the, on the court changing a little bit as the Lopes are getting their momentum together. Redfield will serve. And it'll go into the stands. So it'll be off the hands of GCU, a point for UTRGV. Even score still. DeFalco, set up by Redfield, over to Kaminsky. Looking to get it over the top, dug out by UTRGV. Kept alive. Blocked by the front lines of GCU and still kept alive by UTRGV. Nope, this time it won't be. Maria Adams and Sarah Hagee on the block up in the front. There's that beautiful front line defense that we were talking about. Definitely showing up, definitely doing a lot better than they were the first set. They started to show up second half of the first set, but it's a little exciting to see them come back right now. Kaminsky on the serve, Akoya with the set. Off the hands of DeFalco, kept alive. Hagee, and just we talk about GCU's front line, but UTRGV's front line has been fantastic, and they show it again, tying this game up four to four. Absolutely. The Lopes doing a lot better, though, defensively in the mid and back parts of the court, avoiding those gaps, avoiding the open space for the Vaqueros to get into. Wooden with the serve, Ahern on the return. DeFalco looking for the kill. She'll find it off the hands of the front lines of UTRGV. Five to four, now the lead for the Lopes. Lopes have showed up this set, ready to fight. Not giving up so easily. As we've seen, last matchup against UTRGV, Claire Kavinsky with 18 kills, Tegan DeFalco with 17, and Sarah Hagee with seven. Those three right there are crucial. Oh, right over the top, Vakoya with a beautiful left hand. Tied now five to five. She just finds that front line sleeping against GCU. Almost so, caught the Lopes by surprise. Yeah, she really did. 
Mitrovic now at the serve. Ahern with the set. Hagee, off the hands, Ahern will keep it alive. Kavinsky, second chance for the Lopes. They send it over. Bakoya sends it too far, and it looks like it bounced off one of the hands of the Lopes, so now UTRGV takes their first lead of the game, of the set. Six to five, the Lopes are still fighting in this set. They have not laid out any easier for the Vaqueros. Tigna Falcon strikes that one. UTRGV gets it back. And that one pops way back. And the Vaqueros will get the point on that, seven to five. Well, a good dig attempt by Tegan DeFalco. Just punches it a little too hard and sails out of bounds. So Mitrovic will serve again. Seven to five now the score. Kaminsky, Redfield sets it up to DeFalco. DeFalco sends it off the hands of Mitrovic. They will chase it down, not get to it. Seven to six now the score. Giselle Zayas on the UTRG Vaquero sprinted to try to go get that ball. It was just a little out of her reach, though. Carpenter will serve for GCU. Looking to tie this one up. The serve. Return by UTRGV. Looking for the kill. Off the hands of the front line. Point for the Lopes. We're tied. The Lopes aren't letting them get away this time. The Lopes are staying on the back end and going for it aggressively. That front line is killer the second set. Carpenter with the serve again. Ahern to Tardy, she'll find it. Back of the net, eight to seven Lopes lead. Great kill by Natalie Tardy. Absolutely, she doesn't have a thousand for no reason. <laughs> Off the hands of the front line of Lopes, it'll be a point for UTRGV. We're tied again, eight to eight. So the Lopes finding some life in this second set. Some great play up front by their front line, keeping them in this game. Jandov with the serve. Kavinsky over to Carpenter. Carpenter over to DeFalco. DeFalco looking to put it over the top. No good. Front line block again. It will go the way of UTRGV as that one sails out of bounds. Nine to eight now, they lead. Yeah, bounced off of GCU's hands and right past outside the line. Jandoff with the serve. Ahern keeps it up. Carpenter with the bump. Over to Tardy. Tardy for the kill again. Nine to nine, tie game. You could see on their faces, the Vaqueros thought they were gonna try to sneak it over real quick, but the Lopes actually set it back up for Riley Tardy to get that kill. DeFalco with the serve. Over the top, Ahern. Just gets to it over to Carpenter. Back to Tardy off the hands of the front line. Kept up by UTRGV. Kavinsky. No good, UTRGV keeping it up. DeFalco sets it up to Tardy. Ahern again. Neither team slowing down at all. Good rally by both teams. Front lines off the off the bar. There we go. GCU up now 10-9. to nine. It's the second time UTRGV has hit that antenna. And they gave the point right to GCU. Still in lead. DeFalco. DeFalco digs it out. Carpenter with the set over to Kavinsky. Ball kept alive by UTRGV. Oh, just finds the corner. 10 to 10. And UTRGV will get a substitution. And McCoy will serve. 
We've seen a lot out of Natalie Tardy and Tegan DeFalco this set. Bacoya service error, point for the Lopes, 11 to 10. Substitutions now for GCU. Coming in is Jordan Sanchez. And also coming in is Maria Adams. Try to shore up that front line a little bit. Give the Lopes some height. Sanchez will serve. Just rolls over the net. Bacoya keeps it alive. Carpenter over to Tardy off the hands of UTRGV. They'll keep it alive. Good dig. Oh, just hit. Sanchez just barely gets her hand on it, but it rolls right behind her point for UTRGV, 11 to 11 now in the second set. Sanchez and DeFalco both laughing with each other right there. They just miscommunicated just a little bit about where the ball was going, but they both saw it and they were both ready for it. A, little miscommun a lot of miscommunication as Kavinsky and DeFalco sort of bump into each other, so that'll be a point for UTRGV, 12 to 11 off the serve of Knudsen. She'll continue to serve. Kaminsky over to Carpenter. Carpenter over to Tardy. Blocked by the front lines of UTRGV. DeFalco keeps it alive. Over to Kavinsky. Kavinsky looking for the kill. No good. Returned by UTRGV. Blocked by the front lines of GCU. The combination of Kavinsky and Adams results in a point for GCU. And we're tied again 12-12. Like we said, the Lopes not getting out at all. Number 13, Sarah Hagee coming in for Natalie Tardy. Redfield with the serve. Just finds the back of the court for another point for UTRGV, 13 to 12. The back and forth continuing. I think the biggest deficit the Lopes have had to deal with was a two point deficit but so far, it's been 1.1 point for each team. Absolutely. And this being the final game of the regular season for the Lopes, that, is, that one is just outside the line. We'll go to UTRGV for 14 to 12. But it being the last game, it's excellent to see the Lopes utilizing everything that they've learned this entire season and playing really hard. Almost a service error right there, but it goes over. Kavinsky on the kill attempt. Off the hands, it'll be a point for the Lopes. 13 to 14, they keep the deficit as short as possible. Some great play up front for the Lopes. Kavinsky on the serve. And service error, so now it'll be four, 15 to 13. Checking in now is Ahern. And we will get a timeout. So we'll take one as well when we get back. Continue to the end of the second set right after this. On the field. In the pool. On the court. We wear our game faces under the lights. But sometimes our toughest opponents aren't wearing a uniform. Instead, we confront them internally. Mental illness affects one in four adults in the United States. And suicide is the second leading cause of death among college students. If you or someone you know is fighting a silent battle, please speak up and ask for help. You are not alone. Fifteen to thirteen, the current score. UTRGV ahead of the Lopes in the second set, but the Lopes playing fantastic up front. We talked about them shoring up their defense, and do we? I think we're seeing it in the second set. Absolutely, we've seen a lot of points just from Natalie Tardy getting her kills, adding to the thousand that she's already gotten. We've seen Tegan DeFalco. We've seen a lot of the players on the court just being able to read each other. There's been some miscommunication, but the communication has been there. We've seen them talking to each other. We've seen them trying to maneuver around the ball, maneuver around what they're doing so that they can get the ball over to the UTRGV side. Well, the defense is gonna have to stay strong as much as possible, and it's led by Maria Adams and Claire Kavinsky. And hopefully they can stay strong here coming up into the, second, the end of the second set. 15 to 13, UTRGV will serve. That'll be Wooden. Ahern on the return. Dug up by Redfield. DeFalco. Kept alive by UTRGV. The kill a little too far ahead. It'll go out of bounds, 14 to 15. UTRGV still leads, but some light still there for this Lopes team. The Lopes still have plenty of time, plenty of chances. They're only down by one point. 
as they started out this set in the lead, we can definitely be assured that the Lopes are not just going to give up this set so easily. Ahern on the serve. Blocked by the front line, off the hands of Wooden. It'll go for a point for GCU. We're tied again, 15 to 15. Lopes continue to show their skill and show their quick reactiveness when it comes to those really close decisions like that. Just barely over the net. Just past the diving Emma Ahern. It'll be a point for UTRGV Metrovic with a hard kill. 16 to 15 and Metrovic will serve. Serve on the way. Ahern, Redfield to DeFalco. DeFalco, kept alive by UTRGV. DeFalco, back to Redfield. Redfield over to Hagee. Kept alive again. The dig, Ahern, no good. Great attempt by Emma Ahern, just a little bit too out in front of her. We compare both teams right now. We're seeing UCRGV still playing at that same higher level that they started out the game with, but the Lopes continue to improve and continue to increase the communication. As DeFalco, that kill attempt goes out of bounds, 18 to five. So this is the biggest, biggest deficit so far the Lopes have had to face in this second set, which is nice because it's only three points. Metrovic will continue to serve. Kaminsky to Redfield, over to DeFalco, off the hands of the front lines, it'll fall for a point for GCU, now they're only down two. Ball kind of floated in the air for a minute right there. They, they had plenty of time, but they just didn't see where the ball went. And the Lopes capitalized on that point. 18 to 16, like you said, the Vaqueros still in the lead. Carpenter on the serve. Bakoya keeping it up. Great dig by DeFalco. Tardy. Kendall Gray coming up big for GCU. We will have a timeout by GCU. We'll take one as well. When we come back, we'll get the rest of this second set going right after this. Hey, you. Are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in. We're going on an adventure. In Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to experience. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you can earn your degree in fewer than four years and explore everything Arizona has to offer. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. Current score, 19 to 16. Lopes finding themselves in a small bit of a deficit. Dewey, three points isn't too much to complain about. Great play so far by the Lopes in the front line. Getting a lot of great play by Tegan DeFalco. What do they have to do to lock up this second set and possibly send this to four games? Well, you're, you're absolutely right. Three points is not that much to complain about at all. And with how they've been playing, they, they honestly have been playing really well. If anything, I would say for this set, they need to improve the communication. If the communication between the players on the court were to be better, then they definitely would have not had this three-point deficit right now. So UTRGV will serve. Jandov will take it. Ahern. DeFalco on the kill, off the hands. It'll fall for a point for GCU. 19 to 17. Just like that right there. Communication is important. If As long as your players know where the ball is going to be and they know who's going to get the ball, there will not be two people running into each other. There won't be any confusion about who is going to attack the ball and who's digging the ball. So we have right there an excellent showmanship of this skill. And that one will just graze the corner of the court, so it'll be another point for UTRGV. And you are right, Dewey. Communication is very key for this team's success. The 
Vakoya with the serve. Kaminsky over to Carpenter, back to Kaminsky. Ahern on the dive. DeFalco keeps it alive. Communication, no problem. It gets right over. Great hit by Kavinsky. Front line for Gray off her hands. It'll fall for a point for GCU. That's exactly what we're talking about right there. The quickness, the reactiveness. Tegan DeFalco running to go get that ball and hitting it back over so that Kavinsky could hit it. That's exactly what the Lopes need to keep on doing and keep on working together to show. Sanchez will serve. Return by UTRGV. Just over the top. A nice drop shot for UTRGV, 21 to 18. And it seems like the, the closer they get, the farther they end up getting, because this team, the Lopes score a point, the Vaqueros score a point. Absolutely. They're stuck in that one to one back and forth, but they just are two points away. Excuse me, three points away. DeFalco, Carpenter. Over to Kavinsky for the kill. Kept alive by UTRGV. Sent out of bounds. And they were looking for a hand, and they might have just found it tipped off. One of the lopes, so it is a point for UTRGV, 22 to 18. Might have hit off the hands of one of the backcourt defenders for the lopes. Either way, we'll get a serve by Knudsen. Kavinsky to Carpenter. Carpenter sending it up for Tardy. No good. Blocked. It'll be a point for UTRGV, 23 to 18 now. Those close, close tip off the fingers as we have a timeout on the Lopes side. We'll be right back after this. Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. 28 to 23 to 18 so far. The Lopes finding themselves deficit just getting a little bigger and bigger. But Dewey, they've still had some great plays so far by the front courts of this defense. Absolutely. They started out, like we've said, leading this set. And they've slowly, slowly been inching further away. They're only down by five points right now. But you know what? This entire set has been a massive improvement to what their first set was. Seeing their offense and their defense communicate and move better on defense and show, be show up better on defense, especially with the front line and having that reaction, that reaction time to get the ball back on the other side has been incredible, this set. Well, unfortunately, they're in the rut of one team scoring one point and the next team following it with a point. So. GCU's got to find a way to break away, and if they're going to do it, they're going to need to do it now. Absolutely. Served by Knudsen. DeFalco keeps it alive. Carpenter over to Kavinsky. Off the hands of UTRGV, they'll keep it alive. Ta over it. It'll fall a point for GCU as that one goes out of bounds. A nice touch, but just a little bit too far right in GCU, 23-19. You see a little bit of uh, sweat brushed away on the lope side. There was nobody in that area. They just got really lucky. That you charge if he hit that just outside the line. Natalie Tardy serving. On the set, keeping it alive. Sanchez will send it over. Kaminsky, dug out, it'll go for a point. Good attempt by Natalie Tardy on that dig. 24 to 19, Emma Ahern will check in. Natalie Tardy will come out. And the serve, Ahern, Carpenter, over to Kavinsky. Blocked by the front lines, Ahern keeps it alive. Carpenter, DeFalco. Oh, just right where the defense, find, the UTRG finding a hole and they'll get the second set. So the Lopes now down two sets to nothing as the Vaqueros take this one 25 to 19. Well, Dewey. 
For two very hard fought sets for GCU, but right now they find themselves in a 2-0 deficit. What do they have to do when the third set rolls around to try to send this one to a possible fourth game? Well, as we've been saying this entire time, the first set was a real bloodbath, honestly. The Lopes got them, but did not have exactly what they needed to continue that set, and they did not have the chance to get the points that they needed. The second set, they definitely showed up, and they definitely were improved on their defense. They were improved on their communication. They improved all around the entire board. They started out on really positively, ended up not winning that set, but if we see the improvement continue, the third set should be where they can get it off. Well, hopefully they'll find their way in the third set. But right now, let's take a look at the upcoming tennis team as they get their season underway for GCU. You know, finishing at the top of our conference the last few years with both teams uh, having won conferences in the last two, three years definitely adds to the self-confidence that the players have bringing into new seasons. Even new players that come in kind of get to ride the coattails from the previous season, and it's certainly uh, nice to build off of. If we don't finish high in a conference, uh, obviously we're going to want to work that much harder, but when you do feel uh, finish high in the conference, you know you've got big shoes to fill and uh, you're up for the challenge. We're looking to have great experience. We are have a couple new faces, some great new people, some returners, and we're just looking to build our team in, in order to get ready for the season. It definitely gives it a lot more excitement. We are really getting prepared to face some great teams next season and in order to prepare for the WAC tournament. It's just uh, really exciting. It's great to be able to lead these girls and pushing them and create a good environment in our team. The fall season is mostly to get prepared for the, for the, for the season that is coming up next semester. We're really excited as a team with the new guys uh, to get well prepared for the, for the season for the WAC tournament that is coming up at the end of next semester. We finished second last semester, we're a little bit disappointed, but now we know what we have to do to get first. So right now we're practicing to get this first place for next year and I hope it's, we're going to make it as a team. The new guys, honestly, we have new two guys. Uh, they're fantastic, they're doing a great job, they have the right attitude and they're going to bring a lot to, to, the, to the old guys that, uh, that uh, came back, so I'm really excited for, uh, for next season. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to have uh, our own tournament. I hope we'll perform well there. And uh, yeah, I hope we'll do well. Well, the tennis season just getting underway, and Dewey looks like D1 eligible. Maybe make the tournament this year? I think we can do it. I hope we can do it. Well, sports is the only thing GCU is about. We also have a fantastic, fantastic band here, the Canyon Worship Band, with a new song on their newest album called Keep Praying, and we'll take a look at that with this featurette. My hope for anyone who listens to the record is that they would hear the songs and the words that they hear would resonate with their heart. All these songs were written from the hearts of these students here at GCU and I know their hearts are all desired to bring praise and worship to God and I just hope that some of the people who listen to this album can feel our struggles and can realize that even through it all that Jesus is still with us and that we can still worship him even when times are bad. So I just hope that this album is an encouragement to people. My hope would be that each individual will be able to take away something different from each song because each song is so unique in its own way, the different genres and I think it can appeal to different people. It's a really authentic outpouring in tons of different ways with tons of different words of people's love for Jesus and recognition that at the end of the day, the only thing that matters above and beyond music and anything we could do is Jesus. And that's why we use worship and we use all of these tools that we have been blessed to have, like the studio and the school and our time to glorify God and point others to Him. Oh, Father, Welcome back to the GCU Arena. It's incredible to see su such powerful movements right there. Just GCU students writing, producing, creating those songs themselves. They're str from scratch. They have no idea. They just come up with the songs. They, they're recording them here on GCU's campus. And, you know, it's just incredible to see students writing, using their passion to do something that they love. And it just 
GC is a wonderful place to do that. And you can listen to that album on iTunes, purchase it on iTunes, listen to it on Spotify. But we get back, the men's basketball team just starting their season with a win against Florida A&M. But right now, let's take a little bit of a closer look at Josh Braun, the star shooting guard for the men's basketball team. Freshman year, it was drastically different than it is now. I mean, it's been insane to see just how much this school has grown. It's been a lot of fun to be a part of, and I, and I was able to, I was lucky enough to be um, one of the first members of the basketball team with, with Coach Marley coming in on his staff. I was one of his first recruits, and it was cool to just see how he's built this program. Now being eligible for the tournament and being uh, you know, having that opportunity to go play in the postseason afterwards is uh, that's exciting. That's exciting for me. That's something I've always wanted to do as a kid and always wanted to play. You grew up watching March Madness tournament, grew up watching you know, all these big teams play and compete in that, that round of 64. And, and I want to be a part of it. I've, I've you know, said that from uh, you know, my start here. I was hoping to, to have a shot at it my last year, and, and here we are. And so that's, that's my, my biggest hope is that we'd win the WAC, go to the tournament, and hopefully make some noise in the tournament. After graduation, that's, that's still up in the air. You know, we'll see. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to look too far ahead. You know, I want to be focused on, on the here and now. But, however, I would, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful, uh, you know, maybe hopefully play professionally after this year is up or, or something. But we'll see. I mean, it's, um, there's so much time, you know, left. There's, there's a long season ahead of us. Um, there's a lot that can happen. And so I'm hopeful to have a good year first and foremost, focus on, on Grand Canyon University and finish out my career here. I think I've grown a lot. I think, uh, you know, college will do that to you. I've, I've learned a lot just about life in general, um, you know, about how to take care of myself, how to uh, love others better, you know, be a better teammate, be a better person. Um, it's, it's been insane. And I, I'd have to say Christ is the one that shaped and molded me. I know it's, uh, it could be the cliche Christian answer, but I believe it. It's, uh, it's I mean, he's, he's been there for me every step of the way, um, you know, though I... Um, have dealt with certain circumstances that sometimes were unfavorable, sometimes were favorable. I mean, he's been there to, to see me through it every step of the way. Um, he's given me perspective just to know um, that regardless of my circumstances, they don't have to define me. And, and I'm so thankful for that. And I believe that I'm victorious in, you know, in all things through Christ. And that's been what's kept me going, you know, through adversity, through it all, through injuries and stuff, knowing, um, you know, that I have a hope and a future in him has been, I mean, it's, it's been the difference in, in my life. And, and I'm so thankful for that. Always great to know a little bit more about Josh Braun, the fantastic senior for this men's basketball team. So much fun to watch out there. Absolutely. He, he has just grown so much as a basketball player. I remember two years ago watching him play. He, you know, he, he knows how to shoot the ball. He really knows how oh, to shoot yeah. the ball. But his improvement is coming to where he's being able to work better with the team and work better being able to shoot. And just I enjoy watching him so much. It's so fun. Well, just like the men's basketball season, we're just getting underway here for the third set. And when we come back, we'll get you ready for it. You're watching Women's Volleyball here on GCU TV. Remembrance and reflection, community and celebration, humbled with honor. Our veterans are the silent heroes whose courage and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. This is a time for reuniting with those who served beside you, for the faces you missed while away. This is a day to stand tall, united with pride. This Veterans Day and every day, Grand Canyon University honors our heroes and pays tribute to your heroism. Thank you for your service. And welcome back, everybody. Of course, today is Veterans Day. And like we said, we'd like to thank a very big thank you to all of the men and women who are currently serving and have served in our extended military branches here in the great country of the United States of America. And do we? For Veterans Day, we are in our third set. Unfortunately, the Lopes are down two to nothing. What do they have to do to capture this third set and send it to a fourth set? This is where we're going to be able to see the complete GCU women's volleyball team right here. This is where we're going to see the, the, the maximum energy, the maximum effort, the focus that they need. Everything that they've been doing this far is for them to improve. They, they've, they've been working together, they've been communicating with each other, and we've seen a lot of the defense, especially in that front line right here, right up to the net, improve. And so seeing them get the ball and seeing them focus on their defense is going to be crucial because we've seen that their offense has improved the entire the, for that second set, but now their defense is going to have to show up to keep the Vaqueros away. 
Well, hopefully the defense will stay strong as we get ready for the third set. Lopes trying to send it to a game four. Dewey, like you said, the defense has been strong. Hopefully it'll continue as we get you ready for the third set. It looks like hopefully GCU will start with the ball as they look to get something going, this sort of back and forth we've had all game. Minus, of course, the first set. Second set going back and forth for both teams. One team would score a point. The next team would score a point. Unfortunately, UTRGV just kind of broke ahead right at the end of that second set. But Dewey, like you said, they've been improving almost every single set. The first set, they got crushed. Second set, they come out completely different team, it looked like, Absolutely. from the first yeah, set. for sure, for sure. And now, you know, like I said, we hopefully want to see that improvement continue and then their their gameplay continue to improve into this third set so that they can take it to a fourth. Bakoya with the serve. Kaminsky looking for the kill. It'll go off the hands of the front lines of UTRGV. GCU starts it off with a point early. There we go again. Just like the second set, if we can see the Lopes keep going. Ahern with the serve. Just tips over the net. Bakoya looking for the setup. Off the hands of GCU, it'll be a point for UTRGV. We got Knudsen to serve right now. The serve, Knudsen. Keeping it alive. Kaminsky looking for this kill, but again, the front line for UTRGV, too strong. There's another one of those holes right there that we saw UTRGV take advantage of so much in the first set. The Lopes can close that up early. They will not have a repeat. Knudsen with the serve. DeFalco keeps it alive. Looking for the touch. No good. Kept alive by UTRGV. DeFalco. Redfield sets it up. Kavinsky killed again by the front lines of UTRGV. The dive, no good. Three to one now. Lopes find themselves down early again. There was a little bit of, like we've talked about a lot in that second set, a little bit more mis miscommunication. Two GCU players went down to dive, and they just missed that ball. Redfield sets it up to Kavinsky. Blocked again by the front lines and into the net on the return. It's Kavinsky, four to one. Now the deficit for GCU. Got to find a spark here for GCU. Absolutely. they struggling to find that same momentum they had in the second set. Got that first point, and the Vaqueros have gotten four in a row. Returned, UTRGV keeps it alive. Through the front lines, it'll be a point for GCU. Spiked out of bounds by UTRGV. When it Carpenter on the serve. Koya keeps it alive. Oh, right over the top. Big hole for the Lopes defense. As it's just dropped right in between where nobody was. Five to two now. Lopes down three. Lopes seem to be struggling to find their rhythm in this third set. Diving attempt by Kavinsky, but it'll fall right into the net. Point again for G UTRGV. Like you said, it's been almost as if we're watching three different teams. Each set, a different team comes out onto the court. Carpenter. There it is. Spike down by Tressa Schuler. Six to three now. Schuler with the serve. DeFalco with the kill. <laughs> Great job. Tegan DeFalco finding the hole and putting the ball in it. Six to four. Lopes down two. 
That's impressive for DeFalco, only being 5'8". She can really get up there, and she killed that ball really deep. Serves sent way out of bounds. Off the hands of GCU. Another tough break for GCU as UTRGV gets another point. Seems to be that a lot of these points that the Vaqueros have gotten have been just slight tip-offs from GCU Lopes players. Carpenter to DeFalco. DeFalco finds a whole great dig. Another defensive breakdown for GCU. Nice touch over the top by UTRGV, eight to four now. Timeout for the Lopes. So we'll take a quick timeout here. We'll be right back after this. Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Lopes find themselves in a bit of a deficit, eight to four to start the third set. And Dewey, it seems like we're seeing another completely different team out there on the court. Absolutely. We know that the Lopes, this is the last home game, the last game that they have right now. And you can imagine that the Lopes don't want to finish the season with a complete 3-0 knockout, but we're going to hopefully see some after this timeout, some effort changes, some defensive change on the court as we head back over there. Score is 8-4. UTRGV is leading. Another and a spike, spike again. right there. Yeah, another great kill by Mitrovic. 9-4. And it seems like the first set team is out there when we really need the second set team. Hopefully they can come alive here. Served by Wooden. Ahern to Carpenter. Carpenter over to DeFalco. DeFalco kept alive by UTRGV. Far side is Mitrovic, kept alive. Ahern over to DeFalco. DeFalco will send it over. Bakoya on the set. Spiked right in front of the diving Emma Ahern. 10 to four now, another point for UTRGV. The Lopes morale, as you saw how Budget spiked up after that first set in the second set, and now it's kind of dwindling back down. Just touched right over the top. Metrovic, another bit of miscommunication down in front for the Lopes defense. As Wooden will continue to serve, some subs for GCU trying to get someone going. Tardy and Redfield are going to come back. Wooden with the serve. Redfield over to DeFalco. Spike in the front lines, kept up by Ahern, sent over by Tardy. Vakoya on the set to Mitrovic. It'll go out of bounds. Points for the Lopes. A little bit of momentum there. 11 to 5. Hannah Hicks with the serve. If the Lopes are definitely going to show up in this third set, this is the time to do it before. UTRGV gets too far ahead. Uh, diving Tressa Schuler unable to get to it. It'll be another point for UTRGV. And the deficit continues to grow for this team. So Mitrovic with the serve. Redfield over to DeFalco, blocked by the hands of the front lines of UTRGV, kept up by Schuler. Great little drop over the top, no good, kept alive. DeFalco, Redfield, back to DeFalco. Just off the side of her hand, it'll be another point for UTRGV as Teagan DeFalco unable to send that one back over. Lopes are struggling right now offensively as well as defensively to get the ball over to the other side of the net. Emma Ahern on the dive off the side of her hand will go out of bounds. 
off the serve of Mitrovic. So it'll be another timeout for GCU, but we'll stay here. Sco score currently 14 to five in this set, in this third set. And Dewey, it's looking like it might be the final set of the defense starting to collapse the miscommunications on defense. This team unable to score on offense. Dewey, what do they have to do to stay alive and send it to a fourth game? We've been saying it the entire game. They need to talk to each other. They need to talk, they need to talk, they need to talk. If you communicate with each other, the defense, first of all, will be able to have their, their focus. They'll be able to know exactly what's going on, where the ball, they'll be able to see where the ball's going, they'll be able to see who's gonna get the ball, okay, who's gonna go there, who's gonna go where. On the offense, the same thing is gonna go happen, and they're gonna be able to tell each other, okay, I'm gonna go get the ball, I'm gonna toss it up to you, you spike it over the net, you get it to where we need to go. See that hole right there? Let's get to that, that spot right there where their weakness is. They need to figure out what their weaknesses are. We need to figure out through the, through the communication so that they can talk to each other and figure out where it's gonna go. Well, miscommunication has definitely been big. It was huge in the second set. It's becoming a big problem right now in the third set for GCU. But like you said, Dewey, if they can talk more and sort of figure out the offense, they, the defense has been there for the most part. Just UTRV, UTRGV has been able to find holes, but maybe the communication can get fixed now. Redfield over to DeFalco, off the hands of UTRGV and quickly loops after that timeout score point. You can imagine head coach Tim Nolan is gonna is gonna make sure that the Lopes give it all they've got in this last chance. They're gonna want to try to get it to a four set, but if nothing else, they're gonna need to be able to read plays like that as Tegan Falco dives and tries to get that ball, but UTRGV gets the point, and it's now 15 to six. Yeah, 15 to six now. The serve for UTRGV that'll be Jandov. Schuler over to Redfield. Spiked in by Tardy, saved by UTRGV. Over the top, right into the net, point again for the Lopes, back-to-back -back points. Hopefully this can lead to a little bit of a momentum push for this team. Only down by about half. DeFalco on the serve. Sent over. Ball kept alive. Mitrovic sends it over, diving to Falco, not gonna get a point, UTRGV. We're seeing a lot of looking around on the Lopes team. It's very, it's not productive when you see the ball coming over and that's part of the communication we keep talking about. We keep saying communication, but it really is just that important. When you see the ball going over and nobody's going to it, call out, you're gonna go get the ball and go get the ball to get it over the net. UTRGV keeping the ball alive. Redfield over to Tardy. Mitrovic sends it over. Blocked again by the front line of UTRGV, Redfield. Ball still ah. in the air. Yeah, the rally keeps going. Tardy sends it over and unfortunately goes out of bounds. Another point for UTRGV. Scores 17 to seven, lopes down by 10. Vakoya with the serve. Kept alive by UTRGV. Sent over to Falco. Redfield to Tardy. Off the hand, still the rally continues. Up in the air, sent over. It'll go out of bounds. So a nice attempt by DeFalco. But it goes a little bit too far and it'll go out of bounds. We've seen a couple of back-to-back -back really good rallies. Both teams showing up being very efficient right now. Vakoya sends it over. Nice look by GCU. Off the hands of the front line. Tipped over. Redfield tips it back over to Falco, dives and keeps it alive. Vakoya, off the hands, great block sent over to us. But it'll be a point for UTRGV. 
So you got quick some hands, huh? Quick hands. Well, I was going to say, you got some quick hands right there. If we can uh, show some of those, get some of those hands over to uh, on the court. Put me out there, coach. I'm ready. Bakoya. <laughs> Redfield. Sets it up to Tardy. Off the hands. Dive and no good. Out of bounds points for GCU. 18, I'm sorry, 19 to 8. Wilps finding themselves in a very big deficit, but they are slowly trying to get back into it as Ahern will serve. Directly into the net, service error in 20 to 8. Five points away for UTRGV with a clean sweep. That right there is crucial. The Lopes have not had many of those. They've only had two the entire game. But in this third set, down by 12 points, that was a big play. Just like that right there. Melody Horton, it just goes off of her left arm. They seem a little bit deflated out there. They know that deficit is hard. They need it. They really need a spark. The Lopes have to score here. Knudsen with the serve again. Orton over to Redfield, over to Tardy. There it is. Point for the Lopes. Hopefully this can spark something for this team. A great kill by Natalie Tardy, 21 to 9. Absolutely. This is where the Lopes will have that opportunity to keep scoring. They have the ball right now. They need to keep on getting the ball over the net. They need to keep on killing the ball. Carpenter service error goes right over the head and out of bounds, 22 to, to 9. And Dewey three points away for UTRGV. Zayas with the serve. Orton over to Carpenter, back to Orton. Off the hands of the front lines for UTRGV. Point for GCU, 22 to 10. And Orton, who scores the point, will now serve. Hopefully this time the Lopes can get a scoring chain going. Great save. DeFalco looking for the kill. Off the hands of the front line. It'll drop point for the Lopes. Miscommunication this time on UTRGV as that one falls right in front of them for a Lopes point. There we go. Two points back to back for the Lopes. Melody Horton again is going to serve the ball. Horton with the serve. Knudsen diving in Ahern. It'll fall for a point, 23 to 11. Two points away now for UTRGV. Lopes deficit continues to grow. You can see the scoring slowing down just a little bit for UTRGV from the Lopes. Trying to do the last ditch effort to slow them down. But the Vaqueros are creeping up on them. Carpenter over to DeFalco. Off the hands of the front lines for UTRGV. Another point for GCU, 23 to 12. Slowly but surely, the Lopes are trying. If they can keep up this, no matter how slow, if they can keep up this, this movement, this forward motion that they've got going on, they might be able to come back and send it to a fourth set. Orton keeps it alive. Carpenter. Gray, no good. Kept up by UTRGV. DeFalco, second chance. Kept alive by UTRGV. Spiked into the ground, one more chance. They'll send it over. Great dig by Sanchez. And the Lopes keep the rally going. Powers trying to get it over, she will. Kept alive by UTRGV, blocked at the net. They'll keep it in the air. Sent back over. Spiked off the hand. Orton, the diving attempt, and she punches that one out of bounds. 24 to 12 now, one point away for UTRGV. For that rally right there, we almost saw the second set team out for just a brief moment. They kept that ball in there for at least a good minute and a half. Mitrovic with the serve. Orton, Carpenter, over to DeFalco, blocked, sent out of bounds, and GCU 
will unfortunately walk away at home on senior night with a loss three sets to nothing against WAC rival UTRGV. But Dewey, unfortunately they do walk away with the loss, but a lot of positives coming out of this one. Defense played strong, great play by Tegan DeFalco, and this team is gonna build off this, this loss. They're gonna continue to build this program as they are now D1 eligible, and hopefully next season they will come back stronger and even better than they were this year. Absolutely, they played their hearts out tonight. They played two tough teams back to back. Mexico State at the top and you charge V at the second, and they came and definitely did show up today. Well, we'd like to thank everybody for watching. Thank all the veterans for their service. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, go Lopes.